So you just bought the Canon M50 or any other APS-C camera like the ADD or the Canon M6 Mark II and you are willing to invest some money into lenses but you don't really know what kind of lens you should invest in and that's what we are going to talk about in this video. But first, you need to understand something about APS-C camera. There are different types of cameras. You probably know about full-frame cameras, you know Micro Four Third cameras, and APS-C cameras like the Canon M50 or the M6 Mark II or the Sony A6600. But what really is the difference? Well, on a full-frame camera, your image is going to cover the entirety of the sensor while on an APS-C camera, due to the fact that it's a smaller sensor, your image is going to cover more than the size of the sensor. And that's why we talk about the crop factor. With Canon, the crop factor is 1.6, which means that if you buy a 50 millimeter, for example, you need to multiply 50 millimeter by 1.6 which is the equivalent of an 80 millimeter in full frame. You also need to know that there are lenses specifically made for each type of sensor. For example, with Canon, you have the EF lenses. They have a specific mount for full frame cameras. And you can recognize like this 50 millimeter F1.8, the most known lens on the market, known as the Nifty 50, is an EF lens, which means it's a full frame lens and you can recognize it by that little red dot here on the lens. Then you have the EFS lenses, which is specifically made for crop sensor cameras like the ADD, the 90D. You can recognize them by having that white square on the lens. And of course, there is a third kind of lens. Canon has introduced the EFM series, which is specifically made for those small cameras like the M50 or the M6. It's the M series. They are mirrorless cameras. They are very small and they have a specific mount. But personally, I wouldn't invest in the EFM system. Besides the three Sigma lenses that just came out, the 16mm, 35mm and 56mm, they are not really good fast lenses, they're almost all zoom lenses with a variable aperture and they're not pretty good in low light, they're not pretty good in sharpness and yeah besides those three lenses from Sigma there's not really a point into really investing money in the EFM system. So that's why I bought personally an adapter. Canon has an official adapter. It's around 100 bucks uh, which is quite expensive for what exactly it is. So that's why I went for the Mika adapter, which basically it's just a piece of plastic with an EFM mount and an EFS EF mount on the other side. So you can put this on your Canon M50. So you can take any EF or EFS lens like this 24 millimeter and put it on your camera. I know, I know, I know. There is also a speed booster from Viltrox. It's around 250 bucks, I think. What is a speed booster? Well, in fact, it's basically an adapter with a piece of glass in it. This reduces the crop factor on your APS-C camera, which means that you almost get a mini full frame camera in your pocket. In 1080p, if you're shooting video, yeah, why not? It's really interesting because you are going to use full frame lenses on a tiny body and you're gonna have an APS-C camera turning into a full frame camera. But most people are willing to buy the speed booster to shoot in 4K, which is for me nonsense. Because you need to know that with the Canon M50 and I think with the M6 Mark II, when you're shooting in 4K, first, you're gonna have an extra crop and second, you lose dual pixel autofocus, which is one of the best autofocus out there. So there's no reason to put a very expensive lens 
on a small camera without good autofocus and having an extra crop. Okay, but we are here to talk about lenses and these are only my recommendations. I don't say that I have the best kit ever, but I have a kit that covers all my needs. If you're looking for a wide angle lens, the Canon EFS 10 to 18 4.5 5.6. It's the equivalent to the full frame 16 to 35. Uh, it's around 16 to 28, something like that. If you're into vlogging, landscape photography, or if you want to make establishing shots, quite small, it's quite light. You can balance it easily on most of the gimbals. This is a great lens and it's only 280 bucks for the moment on Amazon. If you're looking for something less wider and if you're looking for something faster, you can always buy this little tiny lens here, which is the Canon 24mm f2.8. This is so tiny. This is, it, it, it's, it's really cute. Honestly, it's it's really compact. It's a 40 millimeter equivalent because it's it's 38. So you are in between 35 millimeter, which is great for portraits and 40 millimeter. You have a little bit of creamy background blur because of the depth uh, of 2.8. So yeah, and the autofocus is really, really silent. It's really compact. Um, it's really tiny. You barely notice that you have a camera when, you, when you're shooting. It's a really, really great lens and it's excessively cheap. It's only $120. Honestly, that's a steal. But now let's talk about the real deal. Let's talk about the best APS-C lens that you could buy. It's around $600. I know it's not cheap, but for that price, you get five prime lenses into one zoom lens. And that lens is the Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8. It's heavy, but it's extremely sharp. The depth of field that you get from this lens is really beautiful. Look at this. This is beautiful. It's really, really, really a magnificent lens. You barely can put it on the DJI Ronin S. It's around 800 grams, I think. It's almost a kilo. The Weeble Lab can't balance it. I tried it with many, many counterweights and I spent days and nights to try to balance it. It's impossible. But the advantage of being heavy is that when you shoot handheld, it kind of gives a weight and so it's kind of stable. Every time I use this lens and I shoot handled, people are amazed by the fact that it's really, really stable. So you don't have that shakiness all over the place. There are two flaws, the weight, of course, and the other one is the autofocus noise. If you think to use this for shooting interviews or to film yourself, make sure to put the mic really, really far away of the lens. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of cracking noise. Otherwise, this is the most beautiful lens that you could buy on an APS-C camera. There is something about this lens. When you shoot with this lens, there is something cinematic happening. I don't know what it is. It produces images that feel like coming out of a movie. If you don't have this in your kit, um, yeah, you should definitely start saving your money because I'm really in love with this lens. And then there is one last lens, but that lens is not really my favorite. It was when I started shooting with my uh, 20D. I bought this lens when I bought that camera uh, almost 15 years ago. It's the Nifty 50, the Canon 50mm f1.8. It's a cheap prime lens that you can use on a full frame body. It's made out of plastic. It's very lightweight, but it's fairly cheap. Um, and there is one thing I really hate about that lens. So if you're planning to shoot with this lens, make sure to not record 
any audio. Uh, a 50 millimeter is equivalent to 80 millimeters. It's around 120 bucks, I think, or 200 bucks. But honestly, I don't like this lens anymore, uh, except if I'm shooting manual because the view of the focus is just too noisy and really, really slow. So yeah, I can't recommend it. What are your favorite lenses for APS-C cameras or especially for the Canon M50? Let's talk about it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support me more and kick my ass to produce more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And until the next video, stay safe, stay home and wash your hands.